you have to know about my podcast and today is when I'm going to be talking about some of my, you know, my life at secondary school basically and we're going right away through the seven to the end of year 11. Now this is going to be a bit of a longer video but I want to talk about a few memories and I did mention in the last episode I had a quite funny memory about this highlighter and another highlighter which I don't own, one of my friends owns, um, owns which I will talk about later on in the video when we get to year 11 because year 11 was definitely well it was one of the worst years of my school life it was actually definitely one of the, my best and um, most funnest years and I wish I could have had more time enjoying the happy moments than I did the sad moments but I'll be talking about that more in the next episode on Random Vlogs so do stick around for that anyway so let's start with year 7 well well, before I remember in year six, I wasn't happy about having to go to secondary school. And I still remember um, me telling my mum that she would have to write to David Cameron, the then Prime Minister. Then, um, what happened then? Then obviously it came around to year seven and we had transition there. Well, I had one, there's a and those of you who don't know, I don't like loud noises. So fire drills for me were always a pain in the ass. And I'll say that to be honest. But I had. I had experience with three fire drills before I'd even gotten started at the school. The first experience I had with a fire drill was, it would have been, when was it? It was when I went to the school for um, like some ICT stuff with my, my now, one of my now favourite teachers, Mr Patel. And basically um, we were in there and the fire alarm went off. Uh, it was the one time we came with a supply teacher who no one in my class really liked. So, and then that happened. The only time we came with a supply teacher and the fire alarm went off. The second time was when I was there on transition day. Um, they'd planned one and apparently other classes had been told it was going to happen. My class wasn't, annoying. Eh? And the third time was um, when I was there for like a, a summer school to get in, you into the, get you used to things. I got my plan and whatnot and then they were doing some work in one of the staircases and the fire alarm got set off from that. But we treated it, we basically treated it as though there was a real fire. Then I joined year seven, and year seven was a struggle. Uh, I had a success card, which was usually given out to the, was usually associated with the bad people. But I basically got nines or tens or whatever it was every day. So I got taken off of it by the end, towards the end of the term. And then we had the first fire drill. Uh, the term, I remember, I'm not gonna go for every fire drill, don't worry. But I remember we had the first fire drill because um, I remember I'd had the dream, I dream about uh, it the night before I drank that. I was in the camera and the fire alarm got off. And I'd gone down like a really big spiral staircase in order to get out the building. Um, that was my first, like I said, big fire drill. Um, not really much else happened in year seven. Um, really liked the class in year seven. Uh, our year seven teacher left uh, shortly before the end of term, so we got our year eight tutor a few weeks before what we had was rollover. And I keep dropping this highlighter and it's a pain. But yeah, so we had this teacher, she was called Miss Devgan. And I really liked Miss Devgan. Um, we got on quite well, we had some really funny books, but then there was a point where the class was very bad and we got put on this book and it was my job to carry the book around and I remember doing this mainly because one student who may or may not be watching got three C3s in the space of 30 seconds or something I think it was, which we were saying had to be a record. Um, but that was year seven and then that, I think that was year eight. Um, but in year seven, I started doing student reporters. Now, student reporters was run by a teacher called Mrs. Wing. So yeah, I joined the student reporters. I remember the first week I didn't want to do it. After the first week, I was really unhappy about it. And I wanted to quit at the beginning of the second week. But student reporters was one of the biggest things that, for goodness sake, I'm going to start doing this if this keeps going on. But one of the biggest things that changed my life, basically, was student reporters. Um, because, yeah, it really changed my life for the better. And I'll talk more about that when the, when the points come up. Um, in year eight, I think it was, uh, there was like a reward trip at the end of each year, and in year eight we went to London, uh, and Miss Wing asked me to take a picture of her in front of Big Ben. And evidently, I took a picture of the back of her head, which she can, which she always reminds me about every time we're talking about photographs, she's like, so I take a picture of the back of my head. So I always thought it was quite funny. Um, moving on then, year nine. Year 9 was when I started to, people started to pick up on there being an issue with me. Uh, but it was around the time I started my YouTube channel, so I kind of balanced it out. Uh, issue, you will find more about what issue that was, you'll find more about that in the next episode. Um, episode 113. Um, but yeah, then, so what happened then? Then, uh, I'm just really just being weird now. Anyway, yeah, then in year 10, uh, it was around year nine where I really started to get to know Aaron and um, 
yeah, Aaron for me was one of the, probably the best friend I could have made in secondary school. And Aaron, if you're watching this, thank you again, as always, for your continued support and thankfulness to me. Thankfulness? No. So I'm, I'm rambling on there. Yeah, thank you very much for all that you did for me in year, in, uh, year 9, 10, and even more so year 11. Because Aaron was one of the people who helped to get me through the darkest time, one of the darkest times of my life. In fact, I'd probably say it was the darkest time of my life because I felt so down. But that, again, that's the real downward spiral. Next episode, I'm uploading. But, yeah, so Aaron, that was around the time I really got acquainted with Aaron. But you know, it was also around the time where I really got acquainted with the caretakers. Now, a lot of people thought it was weird. But basically, I can't remember how it happened, but me and the, the, the facilities manager, the sort of head caretaker, Mick, got acquainted. And through that, I'm going to stop doing this now, through that, I got acquainted to Richard and Adam, his sons. And we built this really close sort of relationship. Not, and I remember one of the things Aaron said to me, because the school, after ages, the school picked up on it and were like, okay, we need to go through and sort out all that health and safety and stuff after about two years of me doing it. And one of the things that Aaron said, which I thought was quite true, he thought it was in, he thought it was good that I'd made friends with three complete strangers, what would soon become four, purely because, well not pure, but because of my autism, it didn't seem like that was going to happen. Because Aaron remembered me when I was in year seven and I was very quiet. He told me he thought I was very quiet, sort of reserved. But then I, I kind of, he was he, not proud, but he, he thought it was interesting that that happened. Uh, and I thought it was indeed um, as well. But yeah, we read it, read it this close relationship. And it got to the point where I would spend break and lunch with Mick in his office. We'd have chats about why things were going, particularly towards the end of year 11 when the exams were going on. I'd go and see him at break and lunch time and we'd talk about things. We'd go through exams, like not in detail, but we'd go through and be like, there was this and this and this, and it was great fun. Um, and then I'd help them after school. I'd usually stay till about five o'clock each night, help them out, go home. So I was very, um, yeah, I had a very close very bond there with them. Uh, then Year 11 came around and I started out Year 11 feeling it was good. It was the last year of secondary school. I was kind of sad, but it got to the point where like things were going okay. I got to October, things were going very good. And we got, then we got from October, we got to, it went from October and then moved on to the last, before going into Christmas. And it was all fine. I think I had one day off. And then we hit Christmas. And Christmas was great. Uh, I spent Christmas at my dad's. Uh, and New Year, actually. I met my dad's fiance's cousin, Kelly. He was a lovely man. Uh, we watched Harry Potter together each night. Uh, it was really great fun, I must say. I loved it. Um, but that was great. And then I had to come home because of a problem that we had with the electric. And I just felt really dead. Not dead. That's the wrong word. I just felt really like sad because obviously pre post Christmas depression. And then it came to like going back to school and I hadn't, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't done any of my homework. The last week, the first week of the holidays kind of felt like it flew by, but I know it went really slowly and you know, the middle of Christmas, but the second week felt like it flew by. So before I knew it, it was the night before school. So in the end, I ended up making up an excuse and basically saying I, I was going to take the day off, which I did for about a week if I'm correctly. But I kind of got, became a bit more of a recluse. But then it got to the point where school basically sent some people over and we tried to deal with it. That worked for a time, for a little time. But then we hit February half term, where I helped my dad out with the pantomime that he does. Uh, he does merchandise for pantomime. It was very much fun. But then I think a lot of the things that people were saying to me were really starting to get on top of me because I went in on the first day after February half term. But then I came, I was really ill. I got, I am... I have this thing for some reason, after holidays I get really ill and it happened and I was when I went home I had a really really bad problem, I actually had um, problems sitting down which is I'm not, I mean not that proud of but I did. So that became a thing and then I ended up taking one and a half weeks off, missed the majority of the mocks, the last set of mocks and then I came back and the school put a load of things in place for me to help me to improve my state of mind when I'm in school because I love just the thing I love school because even people are like I would the thing about school is I would sometimes consider going in 
purely because I wanted to help out Mick Richard and Adam and what would come Bradley because Bradley was hired over the Easter holidays. He was the he is the apprentice of sight service at school. Um but yeah, so that was one of the funny things. Uh well not funny things, but that was one of the things that happened to me, which I'll be talking more about in detail in the next video. But then once that happened, I gained a load of people who I knew I could call close friends, people that would actually message me, uh, check up on me, like I, I, I got into close contact with a load of them. I will, I'm gonna pull up on my laptop now. I'm not gonna read it to you now, but I will at some point. I've got like a big monologue that I wrote on Snapchat the night before I broke up from school. So on the night of the 14th, as my friend, I'm pretty sure it was during the 15th. I was, I was lying awake and I was feeling a bit, um, a bit, depressed I decided I was going to write up all my feelings in like a sort of monologue which I did and I, I started crying while writing it uh, again I'm trying to find it while we speak so not in there but yeah so that was it but basically like in this monologue and I know it sounds really bad that I can't remember people's names I can it's not really it has been nearly two months but it I can still remember some people's names what are other names? Here they are. I just wanted to remember who I credited. I said um, thank you to Aaron, obviously, because he'd helped me through a lot. I said thank you to Eliana, Hakim, Ahmed, Jalil and Saeed, because they were a really close group of friends that I, I really kind of formed around that time. And in English, we all kind of sat together and we all kind of had a load of banter together. And I kind of came, I felt like I kind of came out my shell after this experience. And we kind of had like a load of, because the interesting thing is, I never realised, I never saw why this happened, but people sort of seem to respect my opinion. So if I said something that I didn't like someone, because if, if I said I didn't like someone, I know this is them just having a bit of fun, but everyone else would be like, oh, he doesn't like you or whatever. And then like, I used to have this thing where I wouldn't like, I didn't like Hakeem for some reason. And like, I would always keep, I'd have to be like, the sheets for like work. I'd always keep an extra sheet and then not give Hakeem one, or I'd give him the worst looking one because, um, we yeah, because of that. Uh, I wrote that, who else I've got here on here? I've got Keely, because she was, she talked to me a lot and she just basically offered me a place to talk, which I thought was quite nice of her. Uh, Kai, because he was a really nice friend. And Summer, because she, she, unlike everybody else, she actually messaged me and she's like, you're right, you haven't been him. You missed a lot of mocks. But nobody, this is the thing. Nobody else messaged me during that time. I actually got told by Aaron that apparently I had ignored his emails. I didn't realise, because I only kept contact with Aaron through email. I didn't realise I'd ignored his emails. I didn't even see them. So he wasn't, he... Yeah, basically. I was proper down in the dumps. But as I say, I reached my lowest of lows, but then I feel like in the last term or so of... 11 I reached the highest of highs um quick thing I want to talk about I did say about this highlighter now me and Armo were having a debate because Ahmed had a highlighter like this one and me and Armo were having a debate saying whose was better and we were talking about it and for and I think Ahmed for whatever reason threw his highlighter at me it hit my head like right here and smashed into like all the little pieces and I said, I turned around and said to him, I said, so who's got, so whose highlighter is better than yours or mine? Because my, his is smashed by hitting my head. And then what I, I love, this is what I love to do. I love to take something they said and turn it on its head and kind of just go, you see, you're saying that then? And then you just see their face change. They're like, no, wait, wait, what? No, no, no. But um, I basically said, he, I basically turned around and said, so, so you're calling me big headed then? And, and he, oh my god, that was a nose. Because that was, that was, um, and I got, I did, I used to do this thing where I'd try and get, like, I would act like I was actually upset. And sometimes people brought it. I don't know whether they actually did buy it, but sometimes people seem to buy it. Um, I do remember pretending that I was upset to Jalil quite a lot. Um, yeah. And then I got, we had some funny times. People will ask me some very weird questions. If you're watching and you remember that question, you were very, that was a weird question. But yeah, I loved the second half of year 11, mainly because everyone seemed to, was so nice to me. I think everyone just um, 
everyone that's the thing like I say everyone seemed to respect my opinion in some way or I, did, I would do these things and people would laugh at me not not at me but with me because I would I would end up I remember there sometimes where I was staring at Ahmed and oh my god and Ahmed wrote me a, a little thing once I, I've still got it somewhere I must have and he basically said that um he had um he had the key to my house, all like that. And I wrote him, I said, I wrote him a little thing saying, I'm going to go to get the locks changed. And he, he wrote me a little back saying, I will find a way in. And I was like, okay. But I feel like everyone kind of bonded towards the end of year 11, because we were all going through the same thing. But I really felt like those last months are from like April, mid-March sort of time to uh, like end of March, sorry, to really to like the middle of June. Those like April, May, no, three months. I would so happily relive those three months from school, apart from the exams, obviously. So the month, like April, the month of April, I would so happily relive that because that was definitely one of the best months of year 11. I loved it. But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for the time being. I will talk more about what happened uh, and my opinions on it uh, in terms of what happened why I had so much time off in February apart from having problems in the next video guys so do go ahead and check that one out if you want to know what the issues were I'm quite happy to talk about them because I feel like I've come past them and I feel like there was some there was some um there was not no not any no what am I trying to say there wasn't not any um substance in the complaints if you know what I mean like there was some substance in them I, I was genuinely I could tell but we'll talk more about that in the next episode guys so if you guys have enjoyed today's video and you would like to see more content like this on the channel it's been quite a long one I have to edit it down quite a lot but uh, I'm gonna go straight on to recording the next one now because I really want to talk about this I've been wanting to do this video for ages so I want to talk about it in the next episode guys go check it out thank you so much for watching guys please like and subscribe if you are new thank you so much for watching and remember you are awesome and you'll find out why I say don't let anyone tell you any different in the next episode guys see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>